You're listening to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. International success coach and noted author, Constance Arnold, delivers life-changing strategies through her own spiritual practices, as well as with best-selling authors and experts that she interviews. Think, Believe, and Manifest is specially designed to empower your mind and words to work for you and to bring about a life you've been dreaming of. And now, here's Constance Arnold. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. And of course, you know who I am. I am Constance Arnold, host of the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show. And today I am broadcasting from, what can I say, simply beautiful summertime Atlanta, Georgia. I am so grateful uh, that you made a decision to join me today from all over the world. And I can truly say with all of the faith that's on the inside of me that I believe that your life will never be the same again after listening to this show. Well, how are you doing? Uh, I pray that you're making a decision to have a great day. Uh, I am really enjoying summertime here uh, in Atlanta. And as I always say, they don't call it hot Atlanta for no reason because it's been really, really hot here. Well, today, my very special guest is James Powers, my mentor. And man, you better buckle your seatbelt because we're going to be talking about the power of first creation it's mental and uh, so we're going to get right into that but first of all I want you to make sure that you uh, visit my website I just this week I have a new coaching package and installment plan for you where you can pay your uh, you can purchase coaching packages and uh, pay them in uh, installment plan. So I wanted to uh, make that uh, easy for you, accessible and effortless. So visit my website, fulfillingyourpurpose.com. And while you're there, I want to thank so many of you who are taking advantage of Pete Adams' offer, where he is offering his free book, autograph. He's going to mail it to you. He's going to ship it to you uh, when you make a $20 donation to the Think, Believe and Manifest talk show. So let's see here. Let's go to these quick commercials and then I'm going to be right back with my mentor, James Powers. Are you planning a motivational or training event for your company or organization? Look no further. Constance Arnold is an experienced, dynamic and inspirational speaker and trainer. Constance has helped thousands and has a proven track record of 25 years as a keynote and leadership trainer for both private and public sector. Constance provides the latest cutting-edge breakthrough transformational principles that will align with your organization's vision. Participants will receive specific how-tos for both personal and professional empowerment. Contact Constance and partner with her to begin creating your next successful event. Her website is www.fulfillingyourpurpose.com and email is Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Are you feeling stuck? Are you ready to live a life beyond your wildest dream? Constance Arnold is a seasoned and experienced professional licensed counselor for 25 years and a certified success life coach and would love to partner with you to create your dreams. She's coached and trained over 10,000 clients on five continents and has a proven track record of success. Constance will assist you in getting a clear vision for your life and develop customized strategies, projects, and action steps to begin manifesting your dream. Contact her today at Constance at fulfillingyourpurpose.com and visit her website at fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Well, I'm back with my mentor, James E. Powers. And, you know, I always say, well, he's been my mentor for 25 years, but I want to give him a proper introduction because he's, he deserves it. Uh, he's a seasoned professional who provides consultation and training services in the areas of leadership development, organizational development, church administration, human services, planning, self-development, spiritual uh, 
development and life transformation. Uh, he is a principal Senate person, which he's demonstrated for 40 years relating to all kinds of people. Uh, his background includes consultant Powers Enterprise, uh, J-E-L-L-C, Administrator, Treasurer, Associate Pastor, I could go on and on, Atlanta University School of Social Work, Maximum Employment Project, etc. And in addition to all of his professional stuff, uh, his worst, he has over the last per the 30 years has served on boards of directors for several nonprofit and other organizations. He has success, successfully represented his employers and clients at the local, state, national, and international levels. He is a global man, a spiritual man. We're so honored to have him on the show again. So James E. Powers, welcome back to the Law of Attraction Radio Network. Well, I don't know whether I was listening to that and asked her, why, why, why is she reading it the way that I wrote it? I may be embellishing it, but I thank you very much. And it's always a pleasure and a joy to join you. And I feel in a very, very special way today that the two of us have been talking about what we are going to be experiencing today. And we have been experiencing it ourselves. So I, we know that there's something powerful waiting for us yeah. and certainly know it's powerful waiting for you as well. How did you feel reading all of that? When I read all of that, I'm like, wow. Uh, I just wanted the listeners to know how honored and blessed we are that you take your time out to really share with us and to really um, change our lives and help us to transform from the inside out. So we are so grateful to you. Well, it's my joy. The feeling part is I want to embody the life of being a principled, centered man, living my life out of the, not the rear view mirror, but looking forward to help people, to serve people, and to be a servant at the most. That's my call. He lived, he died, he lived again, and have no regrets. That's my mantra. Yeah. So, and all of my, all of my listeners are like, oh, I want James Powers as my mentor. I'm like, okay, y'all back off. He's my mentor. So, you know, find your own. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> you know, y'all find your own mentor, but uh, we, we're glad to have you on mentoring us. So let's get started. Today, I am so excited. I'm trying to slow down just a little bit about what we're going to be talking about which is the power of first creation, it's mental. Why, why, why did you decide on that topic? Well, first of all, I want to emphasize at the beginning that the simplicity of something oftentimes holds the, hold the idea of the profundity of how powerful it is often is because how simple it is. Mm -hmm. So hopefully today we are going to be experiencing something very simple, simple, but very profound. When we say the power of first creation, we will come later on to understand that everything is created. And the order that it is created has a lot to do with how it um, emerged from its sleeping place or from its egg place or from its uh, incubation place. When I use the word <clears throat> it's mental, I want you to think about this. Mental, what does it mean? It means all of the things that are occurring and you are experiencing in the mind, not just the brain. So when someone said this person is very mental, we sometimes may think of that in a way that shouldn't be. It ought to be that we think of it this way. There is a lot of things that takes place in my mind and I'm mostly unaware of it or it's happening by default. So all of the activity and the ideas that are going on inside of my mind mean it's mental, folks. It really is mental. And then we're going to talk about mental equivalence. So you think, well, what about equivalent? What does that mean? It means that its things are equal in its value. One thing here is equal to this over here. They have equal value. Or can I put it this way? 
We're talking about importing or transferring from one format to another. Let's suppose we had a data file here, and this data file were being transferred over, and it's going to be exactly like what was in place A is in place B, which now means that's what's going on inside of us, whether we know it or not. That which takes place in our mental place in the mind literally becomes the physical outcome of what we're doing. So be careful how you're thinking, what you're thinking, because it turns into the exact replica of what you would have. And it then shows up physically. So that's what we mean by mental and mental equivalency. And, and so why do we need to create in our mind first? Why is that so important? Because I know a lot of people, the first thing they do is go out and take action. So why is it so important for us to create whatever we desire in our mind first? I heard, er, heard early on in my life that things are created twice, first mental and then physical. Mm-hmm. And then you say, well, what does that mean? Thoughts or things, they say. So if thoughts are things, that means that you can't get a thing before you have the thoughts working toward that. Mm -hmm. So you can't get the physical manifested in your life before you have it working inside of you. And we'll come later on to say that that's why many times we haven't received or haven't experienced what we want. So this means. When it says, as a person or man or woman thinks in their heart, so are they. Now, so first creation, it, it's mental. We're living it. We're feeling it. We're experiencing it. We feel the emotions of it. And while that is happening, something natural begins to happen, just like the egg inside of a woman's fallopian tube womb waits for the sperm to come fertilize it because at that moment something mysterious happened. After the fertilization we got the process beginning of having another human being created in the image of the sperm and the egg persons who are producing those. So ladies and gentlemen I want you to know that when you are thinking whatever you are thinking and thinking about it and thinking about it and reinforcing it if it's wrong It'll produce the wrong outcome. But if it's right, it'll produce the right outcome. So it's thinking and feeling and and living it and the emotion of it. It's as if the, what you want to do, many of you know that when I say about first creation, I think about a cruise. Mm-hmm. I begin to work at it for weeks and weeks and I will go and look online and inside of me, I'm already on the trip. I'm always into the ports. I'm seeing them. I know what trips I'm going to go. And by the time my wife and I get on the cruise, I've already been to those places 20 or 30 times. So it couldn't help but happen because once I begin to have the emotions associated with it and the feelings, I already have embodied it. It's a part of me already. And the law that works on this mental equivalency situation, if you will, begin to bring to pass that which we have held in our hearts and in our minds, in our spirits. That's powerful. So give us a, a an example of what that would look like. I know you talk a lot about Stephen Covey beginning with the end in mind. So is that mental and what would that look like? Well, the first thing I said, when people come up to me sometime and ask me, would you pray for me? I said, I'm not sure. Hmm. And they'll tell me what they want to pray about. I said, OK, what would it look like if your prayer was actually answered? Uh-huh. They look at me like the deer in the headlight. I said, have you not been to the end and see exactly what you want to take place and why you want me to pray so that you can bring to pass, pray the right thing? So I'm saying, he said, when you begin with the end in mind, you've already gone out, decided that you what you wanted. And then you begin to speak, think, see healthy, see husband, see wealth, see all of those things. It's like constructing a home, your home. First, you look, create in every detail. 
before you even pick up the hammer. You get a very clear sense of what the house you want. And if you're going to have a family, you decide, you know, we need a family room. So you do all those things. You see all of the things you're planning, the family room, the natural gathering place. And if you you can see them saying, I got to have a sliding door so that the kids could go out in the back. You said, why so detailed? Because you work with your mind until you get a clear image of what you want to build. Then you reduce it to the blueprint. And the development plans begin to unfold. Now, think of this. Who would begin building a house by going out one day and decided I'm going to build the top floor before I lay the foundation? It's detail. Mm -hmm. And I'm suggesting to all of us, until we have a blueprint in our mind, an idea in our mind very vivid of where we want to go and what we want, it cannot come to pass. And so people need to have a mental equivalent first on the inside, because we're talking about it's mental and that exact replica of that blueprint will will objectify itself in their experiences. And you said it in a powerful way. Think of this that no one ever expect once the egg is fertilized in the womb of the woman, expecting to produce some other creature. You're producing it. The body begins to work on creating every single organ in the body. And when the child is born, the person is born with all the kinds of things a human has. Because the law of birthing start taking place in the womb. What if you were as if you you had in your mind exactly what you want the outcome to be? You are not having to produce the physical. The physical is produced in the first creation with you dealing with it, with the details of it. And it does the same thing to your in first mental creation. Your whole mind, your spirit, every part of you conspires with the universe, if you will, with God to bring to pass the outcome. For mother, it's a child. For you, it's your home if you're building. For you, it could be a spouse. For you, it could be good health. So please make sure you know that your first creation determined your second creation, which is physical. Now, once we think of that, that's a frightening situation in this sense. If I half do it, I half produce it. Yeah. And, and you know, I know we've talked a lot about imagination. So what role does imagination play in in first creation or or its mental creating it first on the inside? Imagination is the tool that we use in our mind to create things that doesn't exist before they actually exist. So they, it's like the giant alter, awesome helper that mm. creates the possibility of seeing visual, the power of seeing something in your mind that does not yet exist. So it is a tool of the spirit, the tool of the human being that allows you to see in your mind what you want to see and revise it and change it and change it. And when you get to the point for say, oh, my goodness, there's nothing else I could think about it. And every day you get up, you think about it, you rehearse it. And who knows, you may add something to it. And all along in nine months, that child arrived. Whatever period of time yours is coming, it's not that it's not coming. It will always come. If you've done the first creation properly, you know, I I know of someone and they, you know, they're on a job that they don't love. They feel like they should be promoted. And they're like, well, you know, it's hard for me to see myself being promoted. So in a in a in a real time situation like that, you know, that particular person would just need to begin to first create it. In his mind, get a mental equivalent of it, like you said, add to it and his imagination and just stay there. That's why they say when you believe and do not doubt, 
Doubt becomes the 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 antithesis or the for a plant that you plant something in your garden and you go out and spray weed killer on your vegetable. Doubt sprays weed killer on your your visual representation of that first creation, and you can actually destroy every evidence of what you have visualized. Remember, it says the power of mental realist visualization is the most important creative skill you can develop. Wow. That's why a child early on sitting in a room as a toddler, three or four or five years old, we walk in the room and they are talking about all the other people in the room. You said, there's nobody in here. It is to them and in the place where they're living. If we can be a child, a child and begin to visualize and get excited about the outcome, the laws associated with bringing things to bass and the second creation begins to work just like gravity. That's powerful. So we're talking about first creation in our mind, in our thinking, in our visualization on the inside of us. And when we abide in that state, it will, like I said, objectify or download in our real life experiences. Absolutely. See, they said everything produces after its own kind. That's a that's a physical law. You plant an oak tree, see, and it produced the oak tree. If we just knew that. Powerful. And believe that the seed. Remember, now I always think of thoughts as seeds. So if I plant tares instead of the wheat, I'm going to get them growing together and one will just try to destroy the other. And oftentimes the weed will overpower. So get your mind clear. Get a clear understanding of what it is you want and focus on it. Get See, the joy of having a powerful visual in your mind makes you happy. If you're not happy, about it. It's not a full blown dream first creation. So true. And I want to say to listeners, uh, just like James Fire said, if you are happy and joyful in your first creation, you won't on the outside be sad or depressed for why hasn't it already happened? Because it has happened. Happens first on the inside and then it downloads to your physical experience. That's powerful. Can I just add this? Uh Everybody can understand this. Let's suppose that we have a seed. On my nightstand, I have an oak tree seed. And it'll be there for 20,000 years. And I'll never get an oak tree. But the moment I go and put it into the soil, the soil, the moisture, and the heat begins to make the seed recognize that it has a destiny. Mm. And breaks it open and begins to do it. Your ideas are the seed. If you can imagine your thoughts being like the seed of that oak tree that I have on my nightstand that will never produce until the soil and the heat and the water makes the seed recognize I belong and I have a destiny. That's the way you ought to treat what you're happening. Take the seed off of the nightstand. Take your dream out of the impossibility place and put it inside of you and begin to think about it, smile about it, Mm. laugh about it, water it. And all of a sudden, the laws of reproduction takes over and you have nothing to do with it other than wait for it to produce. Oh, that's good. Well, I know you had talked to me about someone that I never heard of, Peter Conner. I I read some things about him. He made a statement that got my attention. He said, for every form thing in the universe, there is a mental equivalent. Mental equivalents are simply mental images or a mental version of our desires. And when I read that, I, I wanted to, I, would, I believe at that moment I could fly <laughs> because I was lifted to a place because one of my, we'll do later, one of my favorite places talks about the, whatsoever you desire. Folks, desires, are uh, we have really misunderstood, I think, the power of desires. 
it's a version of what we want to take place that does not exist. So, yes, he made some, he, whatever it is, he says, in the universe, there is a mental equivalence of whatever it is. In other words, there is the thing going on in somebody's mind that's ready to produce the physical manifestation. Folks, that statement alone, and I knew it to be true before I read his statement. He just formed the statement in one powerful sentence that I got really excited about. He said, for everything you wish to create for yourself, there is an exact mental image of it that you are make, making inside of you. Have you built, he said, a mental equivalent for the things you most desire? I asked you the question. Mm. There's a 10th grader, if I was talking to him, have you already, I asked people, what you want to know? I don't know what I want to do. At that moment, you don't get anything. Yeah, I know you had shared on one show about the Wright brothers. Yeah, could you imagine these guys deciding in a bicycle shop, see the, the, I've never seen a flying bicycle. Me they either. only needed the bicycle to create the amount of speed because the, the, the part of flying is not about the wheels. It's about having the wings to create the lift. And in their mind, they didn't have an idea back then of a 747. Those guys had in their mind to such degree a mental equivalent of a something that can fly. And the Wright brothers had that before the belief turned into that bicycle flying maybe 100 or 200 feet. And he said the mental equivalent is essentially a design or a pattern around which new reality was formed. My goodness. It's a design. They had a design and a pattern. And those 50 feet, or 100 feet that they flew on that first time with that bicycle and those wings became a 747. Because the mental equivalence of it stayed in their mind over. And everybody else knew humans couldn't fly. They weren't saying they wanted humans to fly. They wanted the equipment to lift us off the ground to fly, to come to pass out of their mind, and they did it. What do you want to do with your mind? Yeah. Don't hang around people who tell you you can't because what they will do is spray weed killer on your seed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so for listeners, you know, what we're saying is if you want to start a business – have more money, have better health, uh, you know, whatever it is, it begins first in your mind. That's the power of first creation. And, and, and the thing I want to come quickly, what it, whatever you seek, whether it's a spouse, a good health, all you need to have is an idea, a mental image, a plan, a picture of that. You say, well, I just want to see what, what he looks like, what he looks like, you know, is he going to be tall, dark, and handsome, tall, brown, and handsome, or is she going to be the, the epitome, shapely, or what? No, you've got to see yourself going to trips. You've got to see yourself in your big king-size bed that's, that, that's everything you want to see happen around a spouse, you have to be living it daily to such degree that you feel married, you feel already living that, and it's no different. You will cause the seed to burst open and the spouse to come back. You say, well, I've tried it every day, every night. Do you know what you're going to have? What's your favorite room? Do it with that level of intensity. And don't worry about the outcome of when. Don't worry your prayers mm. by thinking it might not happen. It has to happen. That's something. We're powerful creators. I, I, I just want people to hear that you're not a victim. You are a powerful creator. And you can moment by moment decide what you're going to think and feel and see 
in your mind, regardless of your outside circumstances. So true. So powerfully said. Okay, so so are you saying that that there's a f- formula for attracting whatever we desire, and it's in the first creation? Is that what you're saying? Is is that like a law that if we embody something, if we have a mental equivalent of something, that that's like a formula for attracting what we want? Yes, and oftentimes, many times in the, I'm, I, I just so I'm a pastor and I'm a Christian. And I used to read scriptures as something that I'm supposed to know, and it's a good thing to know. Many times they were not scriptures when they were being said. They were laws and principles being being expiled. And I went back and started reading all the red letters in the Bible that when Jesus was teaching, he often was teaching life principles for them to follow. Mm -hmm. And it's often said when you are forming a mental equivalent, you think about your desire. That's why in Mark eleven twenty four, and I'm going to take that story and walk you through it okay. and see something. If, if whether you're Christian or not Christian, you can go there and see that and understand a powerful law. And you're supposed to do this in such a way as to inspire faith, joy, your emotions, as we said earlier, hope. You want to experience in the moment your dream realized and made real now. Can you imagine if you visualize or imagine or plan or pretend it doesn't pretend it doesn't matter as long as your desire is clearly framed in your mind, your thoughts and your feelings are of a positive nature. There often seems to be a magical element, laws of the universe. All of those things are conspiring to bring to pass. Yes. The formula for attracting and receiving your desires is as follows. Watch this. He said, it says, whatsoever things, whatsoever, it didn't say a few things, you desire. And it's important to go and study and look up all the possible definition of desire. When you pray, watch this formula now. Whatever you desire, that's a part of the formula. Mm-hmm. When you pray, obviously knowing how to pray and saying up front what you desire, if you start believing that you already have it, it's going to be given to you. It didn't say you're going to do it. The reason it's given to you because you have done what you've done in the mental state, in praying, in faith, and it begins to manifest itself in the physical. Now, here's an example. Well, let's put it this way. When you dwell or focus on your desire, your brain or your head will be filled with seeds, thoughts of your desire. So if you have a head and a mind full of your thoughts and desire, that's all it takes. Never planted seed thoughts wouldn't have any effect. You could not produce. Now, let's think about this. You conscious, I know you've looked at this many times, okay. but let's just follow this little story together. He's telling, he, he, Jesus was often teaching these disciples the power of what was working inside of him. Mm-hmm. They were on their way to the temple. They get there. He was looking around at everything. He checked everything out. Then he left and he went back where they were. On the next day, he was going to this place called Bethany. And back then, he just got naturally hungry. Mm-hmm. And he looked out there in a the distance, and I know how good figs are because I had five trees in our yard when I was growing up. Ooh. He looked out and he said, wow, fig tree, I can't wait to get there. And he went on to see if he would find anything on it. It got there, and it was zero, just leaves. And I guess he said, I'm going to teach a lesson here. He looked at it. Because there wasn't the time for figs. And here's what he said. He talked to the tree. He had an image of what he knew he could do. He understood the power of his word. He says, no one will ever eat any fruit from you again. And the disciples kind of looked at him and said, okay. Went on to where they were going. And when the evening was coming, he came back by. In the morning, he was passing by. And the disciples looked at him and said, oh, my goodness. The tree has already withered away from the roots. 
and they remembered what he said, and I, you know what they want to do. Now, here's what he asked, and now here is the power thing. Basically, they said, how did you do that? Yeah. Wouldn't you want to know? I would. I would. And here's what he said. It says, have faith in God constantly. Another way of saying, have the God kind of faith. Now, I wonder what kind of faith he was talking about, the God. He had the speaking faith. What did he do? He spoke to the tree with the assurance that his words had power. Wow. He said, and I assure you and most solemnly say to you, whoever will say to a mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and you don't doubt in your heart, you have the unlimited power of God. You can believe it. Whatever you see is going to take place. It will be done. Now, to listen to the former now. For this reason, here's what he said. I'm telling you, whatever things you ask for in prayer, in accordance with the will of God, if you believe with confidence and trust that you've already received it, you got it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you've just heard a formula or a principle that says you have what you want you to get excited about. It. You ought to get excited about the things you pray and the outcome, and then you are then operating and seeing what is called a mental equivalent of what you already saw in your mind and prayed for. Ladies and gentlemen, that's powerful. all powerful. And so James Powers, uh, so let's break this down. So he said, when you pray and then the mental equivalent part or creating first in your mind is believe you receive it now. So when we are believing we receive it now, that's when we are first creating in our mental thinking, emotions and feelings what we believe for now. Is that right? That's right. If I'm praying, Lord, I want to go back to school mm -hmm. and I want to get my education and get my degree. Now, they say that first. Now they start singing. I go and get my get my uh, catalog from a school. Look to see what I want to do. Go through the catalog. Go visit the school. Go meet with somebody. Now, all of this is in the prayer process. Yeah. OK, when I finish school, I see myself walking across the stage. I see the kind of job I can get. I talk to the counselor. I'm doing all these things. And every morning I get up and I'm in a thankful mode. You know what? I've already I feel like I've already graduated. I already have the job. I'm so excited. Mom's going to be excited for me. My children, uh, my, my children are going to be excited to see me going back to school. And all of a sudden, that's the first creation process. It's not just, Lord, I want I want to go back to school. You've got to get in there, go to the school, go to the bulletin, go online, do all of these things. And at one point, you may blurt out loud, I've already graduated. I'm going to graduate and have a good job. But it comes as a result of doing something to help you form the prayer. So true. And so for listeners, you know, and, and I just want to say, because I, I can receive emails from you. This you can't do this haphazardly. You have to live this and be this. So it would look like every day, in, you know, in the morning, in the evening, in the morning, in the evening, one week, two week, three week, four. Well, who cares? You're living. You are already happy and joyful because uh, in that first place of creation, you're great. You're grateful because you already have it in that first place of creation. So James Powers, I just wanted to talk about, you know, consistency, uh, you know, and, and just focus in on that so that people won't doubt and collapse and say, Oh, this thing isn't working for me. Well, let's just say this before about consistently. We consistent, consistently allow our minds to get up and default to what we didn't intend to think. Yeah. <laughs> And if, in fact, we are afraid of something, well, I, I don't know what I can do that. You, ha you are doing and practicing the mental equivalent issue by doing it in a negative way. Mm -hmm. We are very consistent about it. We don't stop ourselves and say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not what I want to think. The consistency is a part of the mixing of the soup, if you will. 
Yeah. My grandmother had arthritis in her hand, and she knows she has certain dishes that required her to do it. She said, Jane, you come in and stir, and I do stir for five minutes. Son, I want you to stir. Don't stop stirring that now, because she understood the power of mixing all of the ingredients together so the herbs and the spices can get in, not just the top. They, she worked at it. I worked at it for her. She said, that's enough. Now, I knew the reason it tastes so good is because I didn't stir for 15 seconds. I mixed all the things together. I knew how good. I smelled it. I tasted it. All of those things. I'm suggesting to you, if you want to understand the power of consistency, you get up every morning and you are saying, I am pregnant. If you realize that you, once you said the first time that that's what you're doing, when you realize that, you will feel like you are pregnant with a outcome, a mental outcome. And the physical manifestation of it was the nine month delivery. You eat, you eat right. You don't drink, you don't drink, you don't do drugs while you're doing that because you destroy that physical outcome. So be consistent in what your outcome is going to be. I'm not sure I want to tell everybody what I'm doing. I think you ought to do that in your heart because the first time someone say, you're talking about that. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you can do that. Most times do your, do your mental work quietly and not spread it all over the place because someone will spray some doubt on it. You know, that's so true. You know, and you know, one person that I read a lot, almost every day is Ernest Holmes. And he talked a lot about mental equivalent. He is one of the people who has been working at this. Some of the people who've been working on things like ideas like this, they have been around for thousands of years. We don't use sometimes the same language. Sometimes we, in Christian, we use the religious language to regret. And some people have come on and use a practical application language. And we think that that's not the same thing. He said one of the most necessary things to remember is that you cannot demonstrate life beyond your mental ability to feel it or to embody it inside of it. What? Now, to me, I stopped for a minute. And I said, hold, hold on, Nelly. Hold a minute. One of the most important things to remember is I can't demonstrate life beyond my mental ability to see it already happening. So that means no ability to see it happening means no manifestation. You know, I've been talking about it and I haven't been manifested. Have you embodied it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you feel it? Can you can you know exactly what the cruise is going to look like? Can you know exactly what you're going to do if you had a child? I'm saying when he said that, we give birth to an idea, he said, only from within yourself. Think about that. You give birth from within yourself. What we are, we put into our thinking. If I just could believe that I put into what I put into my thinking is going to come out, what we are not, we cannot put into it. I want you to experience the idea that this word called embodying means I'm just living it and it's inside of me. I am pregnant with the outcome of what I'm asking and praying for. That's powerful. I know, Constance, you've been a perfect example <laughs> of seeing that. And I've seen you do things that I'm thinking there's no way in the world it's not going to come to pass. But there'll become times where someone will come along and ask you a question or say something. And that is to distort or get you off the game of rehearsing and embodying. They want to not intentionally to destroy the baby that. In other words, don't abort your baby yeah. while he's in the mental state you because know, he cannot become physical. Well, you know, that's true. Two things. 
Um, you know me all these years. And when I got my first Mercedes way, way, way back, I don't know if you remember my black Mercedes or not, but I got it and I didn't have the money for it. And the way that I utilized first creation was I, I, I couldn't afford the Mercedes, but I got them about the Mercedes key and the Mercedes uh, license plate. And it took me about two years to really manifest that. And I would see myself uh, driving. I was in my Toyota Corolla, but I would have my eyes closed, not literally driving, but, you know, meditating at home. I would see the Mercedes emblem. I would look at my keychain. I would look at the license plate. I carried the license plate in my car. So every Saturday I would go and test drive a Mercedes. They already know, okay, here come Constance on the list. Get out of Mercedes. I was living it. I was seeing it. When I would see one on the street, I would say, okay, there I go. And so I embodied that for almost two years. And I remember when they delivered my Mercedes to me, the first one, and I wasn't even that excited. I was grateful, but I had already lived it in my mind so clearly. I'm glad you brought that up. Probably everybody in this audience has probably desired a car. The car dealers and salespeople know more about embodying and may not know the idea of mental equivalent. They know they get you in there and they tell you to sit down in the car. You smell the newness. Then you go and test drive it. Sometimes they'll let you take the car home because they know the moment you start. And if you ever noticed that when you start driving or wanting a car, you look and you never seen so many of those cars around you. They were there all the time. Yeah. And they realize that every time you see that car, you say, that's my car. Mm -hmm. You've already embodied that car to such degree that you already could see yourself pulling up in the parking lot, kind of looking out to see. You all see this, don't you? We do it. And if you can do the same thing that the salespeople want you to do in the car dealership, and you do that for some of the things you desire, you will realize it, it's, it's, a, it's a simple, powerful process of embodying what you're going to get. Well, you know, I want to give you another example of my life because y'all know I like to be really raw and vulnerable. I just had somebody ask me the other day, uh, well, 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 Constance, what does it feel like for you that you haven't manifested love in your life yet? And this person was just being kind and, and all of that. And it kind of threw me for a second. But kind of like what we're talking about, when you first create, uh, uh, when you are creating it first within you, it's it's already in you, and it's like you're living it. So it's just so interesting that after that call, I talked to James Powers, and what did you tell me? <laughs> you said, uh, you asked me, has it manifested yet? And you said you basically were thinking, no. I said it has manifested. It manifested itself in the first creation. Yeah. And you're just waiting for the second creation, the physical manifestation. Because when you say no, it means that all the thinking and all the going to trial and the wedding gown and all of the place to go pick out the chapel, that didn't have anything to do with the outcome of going down the aisle with the hook. And I immediately said, it has already been manifested in the first creation, and you got to give the first creation an opportunity to work through the laws associated with walking by and st sitting some, someone next to someone in a, on a cruise or something. When you were on the last cruise, you say, this person came to me, and we began to talk. I said, it's just giving you an idea mm -hmm. of what it's going to be like when you brush up against the person that you're going to go to the altar with. So absolutely, it had manifested. But it almost made you think, oh my goodness, I, I, I go through a holiday, he's not here, and then that would have been the day that you, if you were a wine drinker, pour up a big glass of wine and drink <laughs> a, a small glass of wine. I'm, I'm just kidding in a way, but yes, yeah. a small glass of wine and, and, and take both glasses and tip it for both of you. Yeah. That's so true. And I'm so glad he that he uh, he helped me with that switch, because when the question was asked to me, I answered it like in the physical plane. 
Absolutely. And so that's just a great example of just the power of, of, of first creation. And so, James, we have about five minutes. What else would you like to say to people? This is so powerful. If if listeners would just just get a hold of this one thing, it, it can just be life changing. You remember back up front, I think it was Holmes said, we was talking about the law of first creation. He said, this is what Jesus meant when he said we must believe when we pray. It didn't say believe after we pray. We must be believe when we pray. And this belief, he said, is provided within us that something which knows before it sees it mm. what it asks for. Oh, my goodness. That's wonderful. And, and so when doubt tries to creep in, are you saying that when we live and abide in the power of first creation, that is so powerful that doubt doesn't really can't get in? Is that what we're saying? It is. And think of this. If you are thinking in your mental state, can you go back and deny that the thoughts you had, you did not have them? No, you can't go back and say, no, I never thought about this. I never had this. The, the way you cannot deny having those thoughts about what you desire, you can't erase that. Likewise, if you've done it to that degree, it's already working. The seed in the ground, this is a perfect example quickly. Growing up in a near rural area, the farmer would go out and plant. And there was something mysterious for me. Mm -hmm. He'd go out there and look at it every morning. But he knew it was getting close. And this is what I realized. On a certain morning, he'd go out and at that moment, all over the field for 10 and 20 and 30 acres, the little leaf comes up about an inch at the same size all over the field. Because the law in the ground was working on every seed at the same rate and they pop through at the same time. That's the way manifestation takes place. Ernst and Julio Gallo said, and they are masters at the uh, proof, we will serve no wine before it's time. And I often say for them to not know how to make good wine, they would show up with something I saw way back in my pre days. There's a difference between ripple. Right. And Captain A. Sauvignon. One of an eighty maybe an eighty dollar bottle, another one was in college when I was there, about forty five cent. It was a headache in a bottle. Yeah. And I'm saying wait and don't serve negativity about your manifestation before it's time. Don't serve up negativity. Well, you know, one thing that I want to say, you know, for listeners is that if you're really practicing, you know, the power of first creation, then like James Power said, you're going to be happy and joyful, kind of like I was before I got my first mercy. I was already happy and joyful because on, on the inside in that power of first creation, I had it now. So I wasn't saying, oh, my God, is this car ever going to come? No, because my emotions and my imaginations, I was joyful and happy in that first creation. So that when the when the second one actually manifested, I mean, I was happy, but I had already been happy. And I've heard so many scientists say really one of the quickest ways to get what you desire is to be happy now. And that high vibration of happiness and gratitude really accelerates where you want to go. That's profound. Absolutely. It is. Well, one of the most things I would want to leave the audience mm -hmm. with, and I wanted to deal with this earlier, the word acceptance. Mm -hmm. If you can accept already as existing what you are praying for and what's going on inside of your mental state about what you want. If you can accept it at that state, you've already have faith that in the next phase, the physical phase that you have already produced the physical state by accepting it in the mental state because one follow the other. Wouldn't that be powerful if all I have to do is accept it, I receive it. 
I know it's going to happen. I'm excited about it. The second creation has already got the signal from the sun and the water and the heat that the seed is in the ground. Mm. Wow. And we don't have to know how just acceptance. I mean, Absolutely. Th- this is so good. It makes me want to scream. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it, it's so powerful. I mean, we know that it's July and uh, it's, it's the middle of the year. And people, uh, listeners can take this principle, James Powers, and just create miraculous manifestations in their lives. I would pray, my prayer would be, okay. folks, including myself, don't live another day without living out of the mental state of where you want to be, not where you are. Mm, that's so powerful. Living is not just existing. You are literally creating in your mental state the things that are the outcome for your physical state. It's up to you to decide whether you want to live cautiously and fearful and destroy the second creation. Just remember, living insecurely or fearfully is the equivalent of aborting your second creation. Wow. Don't do it. James Don't Powers, do it. thank you so much. Thank you so much. Guys, you got to listen to this over and over again. Get it in your spirit. Uh, and I'm just expecting to receive just some uh, exciting emails from you. And... Um, All I can say is we thank God for James Powers. We're so grateful for you. So everybody, uh, once again, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, You can visit my website at fulfillingyourpurpose.com and uh, make it a great week. Thank you for listening to Think, Believe, and Manifest. Constance Arnold will be back next week with another great show just for you. For more information, please visit fulfillingyourpurpose.com. Coca-Cola mixed with vanilla shake. The ultimate classic treat. Drinking a Coke float at Arby's will bring you right back to the good old days when you could get one for only a dollar. Like yesterday or today or even until this limited time off is over. The Coke Float, new to Arby's and now just one dollar. Arby's, we have the meats. At participating Arby's for a limited time.